Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I thought I would talk about a command under the Edit Mesh menu, way down here under the Face category, and it's Duplicate. So this is a duplicate command that is specific for faces in geometry. This is not a duplicate object command, which can be found under, uh, let's see, I think it's under, yeah, here it is, Edit duplicate. This is another duplicate command. It has the same name. Don't get too confused by it. But edit duplicate will duplicate your entire object, or copy it. But the edit mesh menu duplicate command here will duplicate faces. Okay? So let's demonstrate that. Let's go to create polygon primitives sphere. And I'll just increase the scale of the sphere here. And I'll hide the grid. So, let's say I want to select some faces on my sphere and duplicate them. So I'm just going to grab like the top few rows of faces on top of the sphere here and go to Edit Mesh, Duplicate. Now before I hit the button, let's go into the options and let's say Edit, Reset Settings and hit Duplicate. So what immediately happens? So you can see that the lower half of the sphere is highlighted in white while the top half is highlighted in green. This is a very good indication that I have more than one object selected. If you've ever selected multiple things in Maya before, you'll know that the main one you have selected is green and highlighted green, and then all the other objects that you also have selected will be highlighted in white. You can also see up here in the channel box, I have this little ellipsis or dot 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 after the name of the object. That also is a clue that I have more than one object selected at a time. Okay. So what happened was, those faces I had selected, it duplicated them and created a new object based on those faces. It also gives me this gizmo here, which is very similar to the extrude face gizmo, if you're familiar with that. But what it does is it kind of combines the translate, rotate, and scale tool all into one gizmo here. What it is prompting me to do now is whether I want to offset the faces I've duplicated from the sphere. You see here I have this little uh, box open up with some options here. Uh, one of them is keep faces together, on or off, by default it's on. But the top one here is offset. Let's do that first, left click and drag. So you can see as I drag this back and forth, those faces are kind of being offset from the original position of the sphere. Now it's not a perfect offset, you can see the pole of the sphere is kind of getting very pointy and the border edges of my selected faces are extruding out much further and faster than the inner edges of the selected pieces of geometry. So let's undo that. The other option we can use is this handle here to pull this out like this. Now this will also kind of give an offset but what it actually is is the local translate Z. You can see here this is the option for that. If I undo the manual uh, movement of that, I can left click and drag on this to get this kind of option, which is also kind of an offset, but it's more of a offset along a normal or surface direction offset. You can see that the dome kind of expands as it gets further and further out and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not um, offsetting so much as as following the path of the surface normals. Okay. And that is the local translate Z changing, which you can also do here with this handle. Now with this handle still active, you see this little blue circle next to it. If I click that, you can see I get this option, which changes the gizmo to be a world, world constrained gizmo instead of a local. If I click the circle again, you see it goes back to local, which, you know, the uh, axis handles here, the arrows are pointing along the surface normal of the geometry, telling me I can move it out along that surface normal. But if you want to just simply move it in world space, you can click this little circle here and it changes to a, a world space movement in which I can move it left and right. The blue arrow here does not expand the geometry any, it's just moving the geometry as a whole. Click it again to change back to the local surface direction uh, space, local normal space like this. So then there's also keep faces together. If we turn that off, just by clicking it here, you see all those little faces will separate and become their own little separate objects that can then be moved around. Which is kind of cool for certain circumstances, depending on what you're uh, you know trying to do. 
So that is the duplicate face command in a nutshell, just by a sense, just by demonstrating it. Let's undo all this stuff, or actually I'll just select the duplicate we made here and delete it. Now one thing, well, let me undo that real quick actually. One thing before I move on, let's open up the Outliner. So go to Windows, Outliner, and this opens up a list of everything in my scene, which currently is simply the default objects, which are like these cameras, perspective, top, front, and side, and the default light set, default object set, initial particles, initial shading groups, all these things are all the default things that come with any new scene in Maya. The thing I made was the sphere, right? However, you notice that it's actually become a group of objects. We have poly surface one and two, and P sphere is a kind of a group node containing all of them. So let me just delete this top half. Actually, let's start from scratch. I'm going to delete the sphere and let's create a new one. Create polygon sphere and scale it up. So one thing that you should keep in mind when it comes to keeping your scene clean. If you're interested at all in that uh, process, that kind of uh, making sure your scene stays uh, non-cluttered, like you don't clutter it with all these null objects or empty objects, which I kind of don't like uh, dealing with. But when you do this command where you duplicate any faces, and it doesn't matter what faces they are, I'll just grab this section here and let's do it again. Edit Mesh, Duplicate. So we'll see what happens is it duplicates those faces into a new object, but then it groups the two objects together automatically. It automatically does this. So if you're not aware of that, you might end up having all these kind of empty groups in your scene as you are working in your uh, project. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you do this command, it will automatically group your two objects together into one group here, and then have the two objects that are parented to that group. That just happens by default. So let's delete this stuff. We can middle mouse click and drag our poly surface one out of the group and delete the group. So now our poly surface one, which is essentially the sphere, is by itself without any sort of other groups involved. You do see here I have some history. The poly chip off entry, that is uh, part of the duplicate process. And then there's poly separate. So let me select the sphere and go to edit, delete by type history. So I've deleted that history now. So now my sphere is back to its pristine state. So let's go back to our options. Edit Mesh, Duplicate, Options. Our options are very few. I have to first select some faces for this command to work at all. So our settings here, we have a checkbox for separate duplicated faces. So if you remember from our history list, we had poly chip off and then we had separate. So we had two separate entries in the history for this one command because this checkbox is not only duplicating those faces, but also asking if you want to separate those faces so they're not actually part of the original object. If we uncheck this and hit apply, and then we can move these faces out like this. So I still duplicated those faces. I can still move them and offset them, you know, just like before. Offset's not really doing much. Here it goes. Yeah, offset, I'm not really I'm not really a fan of offset. It doesn't really seem to work that well. I tend to stick with local translate whenever I deal with this. Anyway, so it duplicated the faces, made a new piece of geometry that we can then manipulate, right? However, this time you'll see that it's not separated from the original sphere, and we also don't have a group in our outliner. You see here in the outliner, we know we don't have that group situation where the two objects have been grouped under a uh, umbrella group name. And also in our history, we don't have that separate history item anymore. We only have poly chip off. So the poly chip off is the actual duplication of the face. But then if you don't check this separate checkbox, the faces will remain a part of the original object and they don't become separated. So that's the separate. And then there's the offset slider where you can put in a value for the offset before you actually uh, do the off, the uh, duplicate command. If I select some faces and let's go ahead and increase the, well, let's decrease the offset like negative one and hit apply. You can see that just by hitting apply, those faces have been offset right here. You see negative one. Again, offset's not very effective in my opinion. I tend to stick with the local translate Z option instead. 
So we can take offset back to zero and then change local translate Z. That gives me a cleaner piece of geometry. You also notice because I had separate duplicated faces checked on, if I click on my object, you see I have two separate pieces and they have been grouped like before. And then also in the history here, we have chip off and also poly separate has been added on because of this checkbox right here. Now there is a separate command. If I go to mesh separate. So this, for example, I have these two pieces here. This piece is still actually combined with the original sphere. It's not separated. If I choose this object and go to mesh separate, it will then separate that piece from the sphere and you get another poly separate uh, command here, another poly separate action. Which So the duplicate face command has a built-in separate function from the mesh menu if you want to use it. So again, that's under the edit mesh, duplicate, and again, it's, we're under the face section here, so you know it's duplicate faces, is that's, that's what we're duplicating. So this, this command does not work with edges and vertices, for example, you have to use faces, and go into the options, and you have this separate on or off. So yeah, duplicate face. I, so the practicality of using this, I use this quite often. For example, let's say, I know I want a specific shape, but I'm finding it difficult to actually model that shape. Like if I want some kind of spherical shape, but I want it to be more of a half sphere or a semicircular section of a sphere. I can just make a sphere, select those faces I want to use, and then duplicate those faces and pull them off. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about duplicate face. Please feel free to comment, like, subscribe. Really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.